Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from CNC3D. So today we're going to be covering two very handy G-codes that exist within the GRBL controller with our machines, any other GRBL based controller and pretty much every other type of CNC controller and that is G28 and G30. Now we're going to be taking a look at the both of these. In a nutshell, they're basically exactly the same thing but they're two different coordinate sets that can be saved in, in a persistent memory on the controller and can always be retrieved. Now they are based specifically on the machine coordinates and they can be used for a variety of cool things. So let's go ahead and explore what we can do with them right now. So as you can see, we've just connected up here with our commander software. And what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be first of all homing our machine just to get these machine coordinates to a fixed position. So let's just go and home that machine. Now while this is going through and homing, if you haven't gone through and set up homing or your limit switches or your soft limits, we actually do have a great video that we've put together on how to actually go ahead and do that. So we highly recommend checking out that video so that you can get to the position where you can use these two awesome commands of G28 and G30. So first of all, our machine's just about to complete homing and now we're good to go. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up G28 to be the surface of our, of our material from the point of where we're gonna be starting this job from. So the first thing that we'll try is we're just gonna jog it to a position where we can actually go and start this job from. So. Okay, so that's looking like a pretty good position for us to start our job from. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to zero our job as you normally would to go ahead and start it. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the G28 command to actually save that position in memory so that just in case, you know, you may have a power outage or something like that, we always have a reference point that you can return to. So in our manual command box here in Commander, we're gonna type in G28.1 and we're gonna hit send. Now that has been issued to the controller and these coordinates have now been saved in this position. So what we'll do now, we're just gonna go and home our machine again. Okay, perfect. So if we wanted to travel to the position where our zero position is, so in order for G28 and G30 to work, you do need to home your machine first so that it has a zero reference point as to where it can travel to. So we would like to return safely back to our job zero from the home position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in the manual command box G28 and then we are going to put an X zero and a space and a Y zero, and then we're gonna hit send. And what that'll do is that's gonna move to where that position was just on the X and Y coordinates, not the Z. Now, the reason why we've done this is because there may be an obstruction in the way or something like that. It's just a little bit safer to travel from your highest point over to that position and then if you wanted to now, we can just clear out this X0, Y0, and we're gonna put a Z0 in here. 
and it should go down to exactly its starting point. Now, if we wanted to, we're just going to home this machine again, and we're just going to make a travel straight there when we just call a G28, just so you can see the difference. We are safe to do so, so this should be fine. Okay, so now we're back in our home position. So let's just issue a G28 without anything else and we'll see what it does. And as you can see, it's returned back to its exact position there. It's just done all three axes in one go. So this pretty much summarizes what G28 does. Now let's talk about G30. Well. It's exactly the same thing, but the good news is, is that you can use it for something useful. So if you have a look on our spoil board here, we've got one of our XYZ touch probes there. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up that XYZ touch probe to act as a fixed position for us to be able to do a tool change from. So what we'll do first is we're going to home our machine. And then now we're going to very carefully jog our machine over where our probe is so that we can use this as a fixed point. So we're going to keep our Z at the maximum clearance height for safety and that's where we're going to be setting it. So let's just get our X and Y coordinates there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to set this position as G30.1. And hit send. And then what we can do now is from this position, if we wanted to, we could actually return directly back to our G28. So let's just go ahead and issue a G28 on its own. And there we are, right on the surface of where our zero position is. So let's assume that we've been going through and we've been running a job here, and the time has come for us to do a tool change. Well, the first thing that we can do in this instance is we can safely get our Z-axis to its maximum height because we've set G30 as the Z being all the way in the topmost position, it should return there. So if we put G30 in this box and then a Z0 and hit send, that will take us back to our highest point and then we can issue a G30X0Y0 and then we can return to the point where we can do our fixed probing for a tool change. And then you could run through your normal probing routine at this point. So this is an example of how we're using G30 in order to be a fixed probing point on your machine. Now keep in mind, both of these functions will persist in memory, which even if you turn the machine off or if you uh, hit the emergency stop, you're still gonna be able to retrieve these values. They are based on the machine coordinates, so they do relate to where your homing position is. So the only way that the G30 or the G28 numbers can change is if you were to say, for example, move your limit switch physically or adjust your machine in size. So I hope this helps you guys using G28 and using G30. Probably a handy little function that you can use for our commander users. You'll notice we have this My Buttons option here. What I would suggest is, I would suggest clicking on that and you've got your buttons here. We're just gonna right click on one and we're gonna call this one Set 
G28. And the command we want is G28.1. And if you want to change the back color on these and organize them, we're going to stick to our fancy pink and purple colors here today. So we're going to update that. And for our next button text here, we are going to call this one, go to G28. X and Y. And so what we can do is set up this button as well. And we'll choose a color. And we'll do the same thing for this button here as well. And we'll make this a go to G28 Z. And this can be G28 Z0. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've actually set up handy little buttons which can return us to our location. So we're gonna do the same thing for our G30 as well. So go to G30 and G30 on its own here. Okay, so what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and test this. So first thing that we'll do, we'll home our machine. And then let's just go ahead and we will just jog to a random location. Okay, and let's assume that this is where our job zero is. We're just gonna hit set G28. And then we can go back through and we can home our machine. And we can now ask it to go to G28, X and Y. And now we can ask it to go to G28, Z. Or we can choose to go to our preset G30 position. And now we're ready to do a tool change. So please use this My Button section. It's a really handy feature and you can program some extra little single line commands for easy access and recall. I hope this video has been helpful for some of you in using the G28 and G30 G codes on your GRBL controller. Have a great day.